Well, hi everybody, Scott Kelby here, and I get to show you some hidden gems in Photoshop CS6. Now, I get to show you some of the cool new stuff that's in the Creative Cloud. I also get to show you some of the stuff that's already existing cool things in CS6. Let's start off with this first one. Now, when Rufus was doing his demo earlier, he just kind of glided right by, oh yeah, you can use Liquify for retouching uh, as a smart object now. And I'm like, stop there and do stuff, so I'm gonna do it for you. So I'm gonna first go ahead and show you why this is so great for retouchers, because this is the kind of stuff that makes such a huge difference. I'm gonna go up under the filter menu and convert this to a smart object. So that's the first step. Once we do that, now I can go back under the filter menu, go to liquify, and I'm gonna use a large brush, and I'm just gonna make some changes to her hair. And this is one of those things where not a lot of people spend enough time worrying about hair, but if you get it looking great, it looks fantastic. So you can see there, we have some bumps there in the hair and stuff, so I'm just gonna use a large brush. We're just gonna tuck this in just a little bit right there, and maybe a little over here. And I'm just kinda of nudging it around a little bit. I'm just gonna move this side too. All right, and okay, so that looks a lot better. I click okay. All right, and then if you look over here, and, and Rufus showed this, you could turn it on and off. You have the ability to turn on and off the, the layer. And it's got a, a layer you know, mask built right onto it, so it's ready to edit. But here's the thing. What if you've been a little too aggressive in your editing? What if you moved your, head, your hair a little bit too much and stuff? Well, you'd be starting off from scratch again. But now I can go and reopen it. I just double click right on the word liquify here. It reopens the filter and I can go, you know what, I pushed that out just a little too much. I was a little too aggressive with that. And I'd open up and the settings that I just used are already there. So that's why this stuff makes such a big difference. This non-destructive re-editable stuff is really, really neat. And I think, whew, I love that. Okay, now I'm gonna open up another file and I'm gonna show you something new that they added in this brand new update. And then I'm gonna show you something that was already existing there and it's for cropping. So in CS6, I think they made the biggest advance in cropping images maybe ever, and you know, it, it, cropping is, is the most used thing in Photoshop. We always crop photos, it's literally the most used. Now when you pull out the cropping tool, you see you've got the regular handles that you recognize, but you can also go right up here now and hit use classic mode and you get nice thin corners. A lot of people said they wanted that, and that's the thing, Adobe's listening and they're able to deliver these things like Everybody wanted the width, heights, and resolution field. Well, the resolution field was gone, and now it's back. Also, the ability to crop to the front image only is back. And these are big things. These are things that really meant a lot to people, but we don't have to wait all this time. We don't have to wait 18 months or more to get it. Now, we can actually get it as soon as it's ready to go. So let's not crop that image at this point. But when you want to crop an image, here's one of the things I think it's kind of neat. Let's go back to the original ratio and let's just bring in the cropping size. One of the things that I like about this is you can change cropping resolutions on the fly. You can just go in here and say, let's make it 16 by nine. But the other thing that you can do besides this is you can flip it. So this is one of those little hidden gems that I was talking about. One of those little things that makes a big difference. There's a keyboard shortcut to flip it from a horizontal to vertical crop and keeping the same ratio. It's the letter X. You just press the letter X on your keyboard. It flips that and now you can recrop the image just like you like it. Something like that. So, and you've also got a couple little grid of things here that you can choose from. So, a, a number of nice little tweaks to that. Let's take a look at something else. Now, this is one that snuck by a lot of people. It is a new adjustment layer called the Color Lookup. And it's in the adjustment layers, and, the, and you would, it's not here in these adjustments, in the adjustment panel. You actually have to go to the adjustment panel icon, and if you go here, hidden in all this stuff is, look, right there, color lookup. It brings up this little dialog, And what's nice about this is it's pretty easy to use. You just choose the look you like, and it applies that look to your image. For example, here's a nice one. Let's go to crisp warm look. Click it and it applies that look, and it's, look at this, it's a pretty nice looking little, little effect there. And because it's an adjustment layer, of course you can use all the blend modes, it has its own mask applied to it, you can lower the opacity if you think it's a little bit too much, and you've got a lot more choices. So let's look at fall colors. Oh, you know which one I like a lot? Film stock looks really good. Look at the effect there, it's kind of like a high contrast effect. I really like that one, film stock looks pretty good. And there's uh, late sunset. 
and you think, wow, well, that's over the top. That's okay. Look, it's on its own layer, and you can lower it a little bit. So that's one that snuck by. I want to give you another one that snuck by, too, because this one is, I have to admit, it's kind of buried, and if you didn't know it was there, you might not find it. But it's called phototoning. Let me open this up. And what phototoning does is it allows you, first I'll, like, I'll set my black and white back to their defaults, and what it allows you to do is this. Go to your adjustment panels. We're gonna go all the way down here to gradient map. Now I always use gradient map to just make a quick black and white photo watch. You choose it, that makes a decent black and white. But if you click right over here and bring up the gradient editor, there's a little pop-down menu, and in CS6, there's something brand new called photographic toning. They hired this pro photographer to come in here and create all these really cool looking split tones. And these are all based on like darkroom techniques and very popular split toning combinations. So it's already ready to go. All you have to do is click and find the ones that you like. And they've got all kinds of different looks. And it's one of those things where it's just a nice one click effect. It's right there and it's just a no brainer. So give those a try now that you know where they're hidden. All right, hey, let's look at one more that I think is kind of cool that they snuck into CS6. Remember the image we were cropping earlier? One of the things that they allowed you to do, I opened this up in camera raw, and, and that is to paint with white balance. Now there's a very, very popular effect that you would do to an image like this that you're lighting with off camera flash, and that's to put a very, very strong yellow gel. The gel would be a, called a CTO, a, a color temperature orange gel over the light to kind of give it an orange glow, especially a, a glow late in the day. So, what you can do is let's add a lot of blue here. So let's just add blue to the sky. And of course, that really makes our, our, dry, our rider here look washed out. But watch, we can get the adjustment brush, go to temperature, and actually paint with yellow. So we can paint a warm skin tone on him. And we're going to have to do a better job of painting than that. Let's make our brush a little bit smaller. I spilled a little over on the sides, just a little bit there. Let's shrink that brush size down a little bit. I'm using the left and right bracket keys on my keyboard and let's just get rid of that stuff right there. There we go. So that way we're able to paint directly on him, make him warm while we make the background cool. It's kind of a nice combination. We need to just clean this up a little bit. My mask painting was not a little, not, there we go. All right, I got another quick enhancement that Adobe snuck into CS6. Let's go to the mini bridge. I want to grab three images and we're going to make an HDR out of them. So I'm going to right click on the images, go to Photoshop and choose Merge to HDR Pro. Now a lot of folks don't realize Photoshop has got HDR capabilities built right in it and it's also very, very fast. So you'll see in just a few seconds it's going to take the three different images, a regular exposure, one that's two stops under, one that's two stops over and combine them into one. And you're looking at the image and you go, that doesn't look that great, but there's actually a preset I'm gonna to try to talk you into using because I created it. It's called Scott 5, and it actually comes in Photoshop 6. So choose Scott 5, and it's not gonna get you all the way there, but it's gonna get you in the right ballpark. So choose Scott 5, and you can see it brings out kind of a tone mapping look to this. Then I'm gonna have you, this is what they added besides my preset. They added this thing called edge smoothness that takes the harshness off. So turn that on, and it smooths things out. Look at the difference, you see that? then you're gonna increase the strength just a little bit. Right now you're thinking, wow, that looks a little over the top, but we're not done yet. Now the shadows and highlights, basically just literally open up the shadow areas if you want, but watch the windows outside, how the highlight affects those. So that brings in a little more light in the windows, and I'm gonna click OK. So there's a couple of the new features, but I wanna give you, while, I got, while I'm doing a tip, I gotta give you just a little quickie on how to get more realistic looking HDRs. And so it's almost done. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go back to the original image, the first one that, that looks regular, like you see there, that's what the regular image looks like. We're gonna to go to the regular image and reopen it in camera raw. I'm just gonna hit the auto feature so it just kinda of gets rid of some of that harshness. Then I'm gonna open it. So here's the little last little trick, and that is to take this image, hold the shift key and drag it on top of your HDR image. So now you have two layers. You've got the original image and then you've got the HDR below it. So to make this look much more realistic and to kind of blend the two, you're simply going to lower the opacity. And as you do, a little bit of the HDR image peeks through. And so you can have a very, very HDR image, no HDR, or anything in between using this little technique. 
Well, guys, there you have it. Those are some hidden gems in CS6. And I hope you take a look at some of the new stuff in the cloud because the stuff in the creative cloud has, has made Photoshop better. And I think that's what it's amazing that the Adobe engineers do. Every time they look at the whole program, of course they want to add new wow features, but what I think what they really do that's really brilliant is every version of Photoshop gets better. They fix those little things, they add those little tiny features, enhancements, and tweaks that make using Photoshop better every single day.